Art is our way of expressing our emotions and imagination. In the modern world, art has many forms, from music to films. But where did it all start? In today's video, we will be answering this question, as well as appreciating and learning about some ancient art that you may have never heard about. Enjoy. Homo erectus engraved faint zigzag marks on shells that were later found in Indonesia. The shells were unearthed from a riverbank in Java, Indonesia in the 1890s by Dutch paleontologist Eugene Dubois. But it wasn't until recent years that archaeologists took a closer look at the fossil using modern photography. That's when shallow etchings of a zigzag pattern on the surface of the shells were discovered. The shells date between 430,000 and 540,000 years old, and they show that the ability to think abstractly was not a unique trait of Homo sapiens. They also ruled out alternative explanations for the engravings and for the holes in other shells that suggest they were opened by Homo erectus using tools. We can't for sure call this a piece of art. Like many things in anthropology, it's a debated subject. We don't know the intentions of the person that made it, we can only speculate. But it is an ancient drawing, and is characteristic of a doodle. So maybe 500,000 years ago, this ancestor took whatever tool they had in their hand, and carved an abstract thought of expression into the shell. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Another supposed art piece attributed to Homo erectus is the Venus of Berekit Ram, which appears to take the shape of a woman. The object was excavated and first described by Namara Gorin Imba. The artifact is a scoria pebble, 35mm long, 25mm wide and 21mm thick. It was excavated in 1981 at the Achillean site of Berekit Ram and is dated from 280 to 250,000 years ago. Inbar reported several artificial grooves on the object. Some researchers suggest that the object resembled a female body and was artificially modified by hominids to emphasize its anthropomorphic features. The object was called a figurine and is currently known as the Venus of Berekit Ram, relating it to the much younger Venus figures, which also represent women. If this hypothesis is correct, the object would be the earliest example of representational art in the archaeological record, along with the Venus of Tantan. But both these figures are still surrounded by heavy debate. Debated topics include whether they had symbolic intent, and if they did, whether they were intended to represent a female figure. The Venus of Tantan has been studied extensively, and scientists do agree that some of the markings on the rock were natural. However, these researchers believe that the natural lines of the Venus of Tantan were accentuated by human tools. Ancient art comes in many forms, like this Lafahasi cave rock with a collection of cupules engraved into it. But when we think of the oldest art, we think of cave paintings. Cave paintings are perhaps the most appreciated form of ancient art, as their mere existence strengthens the bond between modern day people and our earliest ancestors, and serve as a beautiful reminder of the essential role art plays in the lives of all humans. The oldest cave is located in Spain's Cave of Maltrevieso and were created more than 64,000 years ago, meaning that it predates our species' arrival in Europe by over 10,000 years. So who made these paintings? Until this discovery, cave art has been attributed entirely to modern humans, as claims to a possible Neanderthal origin have been hampered by imprecise dating techniques. However, uranium thorium dating provides much more reliable results. The uranium thorium method involves dating tiny carbonate deposits that have built up on top of the cave paintings. These contain traces of radioactive elements, uranium and thorium, which indicate when the deposits formed and therefore give a minimum age for whatever lies beneath. Maltrevieso's hand stencils are currently the oldest known cave paintings in the world. These handprints allow us to connect with one of our closest extinct relatives, 
and appreciate just how beautifully intelligent these people were. The rock art at Altamira in Spain was the first in the world to be recognised as prehistoric artwork, but it took years for that fact to become a consensus. Altamira's first explorers were amateur archaeologists, including a Spanish nobleman, Marcelino Sanz de Satola, and his daughter Maria. In fact, it was 12-year-old Maria who looked up at the cave ceiling and discovered a series of large and lively bison paintings. Many other lifelike animal paintings and engravings were subsequently found. Archaeological excavations in the cave floor found rich deposits of artefacts from 18,500 years ago and between 16,590 and 14,000 years ago. Both periods belong to the Paleolithic. Human occupants of the site were well positioned to take advantage of the rich wildlife that grazed in the valley of the surrounding mountains, as well as the marine life in the nearby coastal areas. Around 13,000 years ago, a rockfall sealed the cave's entrance, preserving its contents until the eventual discovery, which occurred after a nearby tree fell and disturbed the fallen rocks. Pablo Picasso supposedly emerged from the cave, shaking his head, saying in 15,000 years, we've invented nothing. These cave paintings are a masterpiece of creative genius. They are testimonies to a cultural tradition and our species' beautiful way of articulating our experiences of such a magnificent stage in human history. In my opinion, the most beautiful cave art is the Cueva de las Mano cave of Santa Cruz, Argentina. The art dates around 9,000 years ago during the archaic period of pre-Columbian South America. The artwork decorates the interior of the cave and the surrounding cliff faces. It can be divided by subject into three basic categories, people, the animals they ate, and the human hand. Inhabitants of the site hunted guanacos for survival, a dependency reflected in their artwork by totemic light depictions of the creatures. It's believed these cave dwellers use bone-made pipes to create the silhouettes. Most of the prints are of left hands, indicating they probably held the spraying pipe in their right hand. The artists use different mineral pigments to make different colours. Iron oxides for red and purple, coelin for white, natrogeritesite for yellow, and manganese oxide for black. They are so beautiful and magnificent because it shows self-expression. These are our ancestors' handprints. It's more than just drawing what they have seen around them. They left their unique individual marks. These handprints show a sense of community, a thriving culture, and an empathetic side. People who really understood what it means to be human. There are many pieces of art from the past that has changed our perception of our ancestors. Pieces like the Lion Man of Hornstein Stadel and the Grand Panu animated cave paintings are all clear signs that our ancestors were thinking about a lot more than just everyday survival. But perhaps the most beautiful, impressive and the clearest sign that hunter-gatherers began questioning the world they live in is Gobekli Tepe, a 12,000 year old enigmatic archaeological site sitting tall and proud in southeastern Turkey. Made up of 20 separate circular stone enclosures, consisting of pillars weighing between 5 and 50 tons. Each weathered pillar is richly and lovingly decorated with figurative details, clothing and wild animals. These ancient builders set their soul ablaze with unquenchable passion, dedicating their lives to crafting this celestial temple. The site expresses their love for something greater than themselves. Their artwork and expert construction touches all those that visit the site today. The figures carved atop of the pillars are love letters etched in time. Each intricate symbol tells a story. Though the language may be lost, the emotion is embedded in the stones by the way they were lovingly and carefully laid. Each carving is gracefully and gently etched into the stone like a master painter pouring his emotion into the canvas with his brush. What's so fascinating about Gobekli Tepe is that it predates any known civilization and signs of agriculture. 
there are no signs of domesticated animals or plants at the site, which means that Gobekli Tepe, as far as we're aware, was constructed by hunter-gatherers. How amazing! This is why this is my favourite megalithic site, because it shows that hunter-gatherers were far more sophisticated and aware of the world they live in than we previously thought. How the site was built remains somewhat of a mystery. There are a few theories surrounding the construction. One example is that different tribes may have put resources and manpower together to build the site as a spiritual temple where they could come and visit throughout the years. This also makes sense because there is no sign that humans ever lived at the site. There are so many amazing carvings and sculptures at this site that it can be overwhelming. Gobetli Tepe is such a giant site with a web of information to discuss, so I'll eventually make a separate video about it, perhaps after I visit the site myself. Shortly after Gobetli Tepe was the birth of civilization, where art flourished, from ancient Egypt to the Romans. I hope you learned about some new ancient art today. There are so many other ancient artworks that I haven't covered in this video, so I encourage you to do some more research. See you in the next one.